Hey guys and welcome back to Daily Duels. So today you get two Daily Duels. You get the deck profile for Mermel and then at 1.30 Pacific time you get the deck that would be replacing Mermel's on Daily Duels. So, you know, in good old fashioned Daily Duels fashion, whenever a deck is being removed from Daily Duels, we give it a farewell deck profile. So a deck that has been used on Daily Duels for the last couple of episodes, unless it, you know, if she any changes between uh, now and the last couple of episodes, this is what, how it's been. And of course, Mermels have been on here. The longest deck in Daily Duels history, the longest deck, it was episode one. I think it was called episode one, Daily Duels episode one, out resourced. I think that was episode, I think that's the name of it. And now we are all the way up to what? 461, I think that's what's going up today. So clearly Mermos have uh, stayed on Daily Duels and I wouldn't even say that they overstayed their wel welcome because it's not like they're being taken off because the deck is, is bad. The, the reason why it's being taken off is because I just want to try something new. Mermals are still a really great deck, still a tier 2 deck. And, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy the deck. So I'm going to go ahead and do the deck profile and send off this deck who has been on here the longest. And I still respect this deck and um, I seriously doubt that Mermals will ever come back on Daily Duels. Unless one of the tag partners want to use it, but, you know, I, from my point of view it won't. Uh, you know. Uh, it just kind of got outclassed, and I you know, and, 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 you know, the power creep in Yu-Gi-Oh! is real. It really is, you know. Just like how, you know, you exchange your deck for new decks when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, you know, the power creep is real, and, you know, my mouth's, you know, they used to be, well, I wouldn't say hot shit, because they're water, so I, I, you know, they used to be cool. Yeah, you see what I did there. But, um, you know, they just kind of just fell off, you know. They got hit on the list a couple, well, I wouldn't say a couple times, I think, just once, really, just once, and yet the deck was still alive. It got hit much harder in the OCG, but here in the TCG, it's still a functional deck. So if you want to go ahead and pick up Mermels and play it, then you know more more power to you. So let me go ahead and get started on this deck profile. Get this over with. So of course I run three Megalo. Megalo, he is a level seven. He allows me to go off of my plays, and I really enjoy him. He, uh, you know, he costs his exchange is fine. You know, I discard two cards to summon him, which would technically be a uh, neg one, but then of course I get to search for my Bisphere even now, and he's a nice 24 beater uh, level 7, so I can go to Mike C, so definitely. Uh, you've got the heart and soul of the deck, TS. TS is the heart of the deck. If you ever want to hit Mermels to death, where they will die, you hit TS. If you hit TS, the deck is done. I swear. You know, OCG, they hit TS, and it's it's not the same. It's not the same. TS it hurts, and, and TS is such a good card. So, uh, he has 1,700 attack, 24D, so he's got that nice booty. Of course, level 7, be able to go into RXCs. Uh, you discard only one water monster, so you would discard to summon, which would, you know, be uh, fine. But then, of course, you get to go ahead and add a Mermel from your uh, deck to your hand. Uh, so, you know, Totally good. Level 4 lower Mermel Monster. That could be Pike, that could be uh, Gun, that could be uh, Lin. So, definitely, definitely, I uh, really like TS. And if you're running a Mermel deck without TS, then you might want to go check yourself because that he TS is the boss, not Megalo. People think Megalo, but no, it's TS. Definitely TS. Uh, I do not run lead. I'm not a big fan of lead. I don't like the idea of drawing lead, especially with the number generator where you run one lead and then you're drawn to that one lead and then you have to discard three water monsters to summon that one lead and then of course the reason why you're running lead in the first place is so you can go Bisphere and summon lead or then summon lead to have a nice 27 beater but you know really isn't worth it. Your XC should be able to handle it and lock it down for you so um, yeah that's the reason why I don't win lead. He's been in there in the past but as of now he's not. Of course we run three uh, Pike. Pike is such a good card. Uh, when he's normal summon special summon, discard water monster and add a level 3 or lower water mo- No, not lower. Add a level 3 water monster from your deck to hands. So you can go ahead and get uh, Marksman. You can get Undyne. You can get Linde. So definitely, definitely Spike it. Uh, Pike. Pike. Pike is good. Uh, definitely uh, enjoy having him. He, he, he's, he's next to TS, you know. And it's, if it's not TS, then it's Pike, definitely. And so, of course, we run three Linde, uh, you know, 
the floater of the deck, so when it's destroyed, since it's a graveyard, you go ahead and summon a more metal monster from your deck, except for Linde, you can only use the effect of Linde once per turn, so pretty much a killer, I can summon a Megalo, or uh, a Tias, but mostly Megalo, and, um, uh, you know, of course, Abyss Sphere, you know, uh, it's destroyed when that, uh, destroy this card during your opponent's next end phase, and then when this card leaves the field, destroy that monster, so pretty much you just go activate Abyss Sphere, summon Lin, Lin, or Lin Day will die, and then you go ahead and summon the Megalo, so, uh, helps with the deck's consistency, and opens up a lot of plays with it, there's been a couple of times where I'll have, like, um, you know, a TS on the field, where I'll go, like, special summon TS, search Lin Day, Lin Day summoned, I t ram into your monster, I'll take the damage, summon Megalo, main phase 2, make a big eye or Draco sack or something, so, definitely, definitely helps. Alright, of course we run the one dragoons, got hit down to one, which is fine. Uh, of course when it is uh, sent to the graveyard, due to activation of a water monster, I get to uh, add one sea serpent type monster from the deck to the hand. That includes Megalo, so definitely, definitely very strong. Uh, and apparently all face up level through a lower sea serpent type monsters can attack my opponent directly, but nah, who cares about that? So, uh, definitely still a really good card. It was it was a nice hit for the morels uh, putting dragoons to one. Um, indirect hit because of course it didn't didn't hit technically you didn't hit Murmurs you hit Atlantean but uh, fun hit indeed. I run personally I like running triple marksman and triple infantry just because those discard out I love the amount of discard I would I would rather have a lot of monsters to discard to go off with my plays uh, you know and just getting that brownie effect of being able to destroy a set card or destroy a um, face up card is just awesome. Um, um, hey I don't like him as much, you know, Marksman's definitely the more of a go-to guy, uh, being the 14 beater, when he inflicts damage to my opponent, I can summon a level 4 lord, Seed serpent type monster, of course, that being Jagoons, uh, you can go D.Va into Marksman, into our mateys, so definitely, uh, Marksman's, and then I get to pop set cards, like trap cards, like back row, so, I like that too, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm not doing it right, like I said, I'm not saying that my normal deck is competitive or anything, but um, I personally just like running a lot of the art outlets just to make sure that I have them so I don't uh, neg when I do my effects and I get a little bit bang for my buck. Of course, we're running the one gun, uh, decent hit for Mermels. Uh, it was pretty much like the Monster Reborn, you know, a lot of people thought that Tears was going to be hit, but then it was gun, so, uh, you know, but decks can still function, of course, you know, uh, decks, they started putting in... Uh, Turge, I think that's the name is, but I personally don't like Turge. Kind of feel like I would rather salvage than Turge. That's just me personally, so, uh, you know, it doesn't cost me my normal summon. I don't have to discard anything. It's just salvage, go ahead, and plus. So, uh, if I was ever going to want to get my, uh, my gun back, I would rather salvage it back than charge it back, but that's just me personally. So, definitely a great card. Need to run in Marmels, definitely. Uh, the one Diva. Diva also got hit down to one. And um, this card was long, long coming. It should have been hit down to one a long time ago, but it kind of just stayed there. Uh, but no, now it's at one. Uh, probably not the best hit against Mermels, really, because they really don't need it, you know. But uh, that's what Konami decided to do, so Diva at one. I, I really don't mind. Um, when one title, of course, title better be at one. <laughs> Hello. You no, know, Dragon Ruler is nothing higher than one. I, will, I wouldn't mind them if they got banned, but, you know, I wouldn't, I don't mind them either, so, of course, this guy's really good, uh, he's another 7, he's a 20 second beater, um, you know, you can uh, send a water monster from your deck to the graveyard, of course, with his effect, if you discard another one, you'll miss timing with the one that you discarded, but you still get the one that's uh, sent to the graveyard, so, uh, depending on what you discard and send, it's not too terrible, so, uh, totally don't mind that, and uh, title, if you're not running title, remember, I was going to check that too, because it's really good. I run two Gen X Undyne. Um, I was going up and down with this, and as time progressed, I really started to like Undyne. I really like the... I like all of it, really. I, I do like the normal summon, I do like to send Water Monster to the graveyard, of course. I can send uh, Marksman, pop a set, send uh, Infantry, pop face up, send Dragoons, pop... I mean, get a search, send Tidal, get them in the graveyard. You know, I can... Uh, well, that's only discarded, so not you, but... Uh, definitely, and then also some people don't like this, but I actually do like adding the Gen X controller to the hand because if I have like a level seven on the field, so let's say I go uh, summon Undying, send Title, banish two water, summon Title, uh, you know, and 
and I summon the Genic Controller, I can Synchro Summon, because Genic Controller is a level 3 tuner, uh, you know, level 3 plus, of course, all these level 7s, which of course will give you Leo, who is a very powerful monster. So, I totally don't mind getting Genic Controller, you know, quicker out whip out a Leo, the better. I used to run Fog King in here, but I actually took it out for other things that kind of felt like other things are important. Also, kind of felt like Fog King was kind of cloggy when I didn't get, uh, you know, other level 7s, like, Tius and Megalo, but uh, if you want to go ahead and run Fog King in your deck, hey, more power to you. He's not a bad card. It, I just kind of felt like there was other things that I had, I, had to do. Uh, I like the I like the Dark Hole and the Regaki. I, I really do. Yeah. They're pretty much like the same in that card. One just you're just your opponents, while it's, one's all. But uh, you pretty much use them in the same method. So I totally don't mind just throwing the Regaki and Dark Hole at my opponent when they're up, and then just kicking their butt with water. So definitely. Well, got the course the broke charge. Can't have a deck without broke charge unless you're running Gravekeepers or Medolches. So, uh, broke charge is broke, and it's at one, and you get it, and then you revive a whole bunch of level seven water monsters, and then you make Draco Saxon, big guy, and Tias, and all that. So, I mean, and uh, Viscaios, and all that. All right, uh, three MST because fuck back row. This deck really gets fucked up by back row at times, especially with the plays that it does to commit. So, throwing the MSTs at my opponents with back row is fine. Also, it was a uh, a tag deck at one point, so yeah. Uh, two salvage. Um, I dropped it down from three to two because it was getting kind of cloggy. Uh, really great card. Um, you know, when you use it at the right time, you can go ahead and plus. So, you know, I totally like going like Megalo, Pitch, like you know, Marksman or Infantry or or a Gun or whatever, and then get their effects and then just salvage them and get them right back to my hand to be used for later. So salvage definitely a great card. Like I said I recommend two. Three gets kind of cloggy, uh, but uh, two is great. Alright. Uh, of course, three Visphere. Like, do you really need any other trap cards in this deck? Like, a Visphere is such a great card. Uh, we kind of went over it before, but you already know Visphere is great. And then top it off with a three Road of Cree. Sometimes these two conflict, but, uh, you know, I totally don't mind. I'd rather have the Road of Cree at times, but that Visphere keeps me safe. So, I totally don't mind that. So, yeah. Alright, that's the main deck. Extra deck, uh, one Gaios. I generally only need one to win the duel, pretty much. When, depending on what the deck I go against, I drop the Gaios and they quit. So, uh, guy looks really good. Of course, the big guy. You know, hide your kids, hide your wife, because big guy snatching everybody out here. Uh, two Draco Sacks, because I'd rather go into Draco Sack than big guy or guy, so he's pretty much the go-to. Uh, rank 7, of course, so, yeah, Draco Sack. Exiton, don't make him that often, uh, but he's here, uh, just in case. Uh, I don't know why I have two on a ones, I don't know. I, like I said, when it comes to fixing and changing extra decks, I don't do it that often, so, uh, to tell you the truth, why there's two one ones I don't know. There probably should be only one, and I'm the only guy who can get me out one one would either be you or you, so I don't know why there's two. Or Exiton, really good. I, I can see it, because there might be a situation, but really? Dweller, I don't know. I don't know. Leviathan, probably because it's water that, of course, when I detach, I do get the effects, because it was sensitive area by the uh, monster waters, uh, water monster effect, so I do get the effects, so I guess that's why uh, Leviathan's in here. Uh, the Leos for the Bisc, uh, I mean, the, the Bisc controller, the Genox controller, Synchro Summoning with, uh, the various sevens in the deck, so, yeah. Black Rose, because sometimes I can pull it off, not very often, but I can, so, that's nice to, uh, have it there, just in case. Uh, Gunnier, I don't think I've ever used them, or I only used them once, I, I don't know why, I think I just literally, literally, I think I just looked at some person's my deck, and I'm like, oh, he's in there, okay, sure, why not. Goyle Guardian. Because he's level 6, I guess, and then I made he's level 5 synchro, so, yeah. So if you want to go ahead and take this deck, make any changes to it, and use it, then more power to you. Like I said, Monroes have been on here for a long time. They've had many different changes and evolutions, but it was still a really fun deck. Uh, still probably one of my favorite decks. Uh, it's just really aggressive and fun, and yeah. You know, even when Monroes were, you know, the hot shit before Dragon Rulers, I didn't really mind them. I mean, of course they were just so good in comparison to all the rest of the stuff, but that's just the power creep of Yu-Gi-Oh, so, you know, the new decks come out that are stronger than the old decks, the old decks get hit, the new decks get stronger, and it's just the way it goes, so, uh, and then you throw money at it, and you're just like, fry, and you're just like, shut up and take my money, and here, take my money, I want to play Shadals, oh, what, Shadals got hit, Shadals aren't good anymore, okay, well, shut up and take my money, I want to play Kleeput, oh, what, Kleeput's got hit, they're not good anymore, okay, well, shut up and take my money, I want to play Hermit Yokai, I want to play Nethclaw, I want to play this, that, this, that, and you know, Konami is just laughing their way to the bank, you know, and I had talked to professionals and just like, well, get a deck, talk with it, and then sell it. And it, 
But that's not what's the point? That's the point. And you're not really committed to your deck at all, really. You're just you're just using your deck just for the win. You know? Where's the heart in it? You know? Generally when I get a deck, I like to keep it, because that's what I can play with it, not just get rid of it, you know? And there's no there's no pride in it, you know? Just like, oh yeah, I topped with uh, my Shadal deck. Oh really? Oh well can I see it? No, I got rid of it. I sold it. Because I already mastered that deck, so I can just move on. I don't know. It just feels kind of dirty and cheap. But I don't know. Like I said, I'm not really a professional Yugi player. I mean, I, I, I know the rulings, and I can rule Shark like the best of them. You know, sometimes I have to. Sometimes I have to uh, backseat drive. Well, not really backseat drive, because generally when people are playing, like in my college in real life, I don't tell them shit, because I don't want to you know, backseat duel. But I know. If someone will fuck up, I will definitely call them on it. Or they miss players, or they try to do something that they can't, I will definitely, definitely call them out on it. So, you know, and I was, it was actually kind of funny where it was actually, I think it was like, should doll tell us teller 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 dolls or whatever versus Spoojins and the teller knight guy he went like Vega into Altair, Altair summon Deneb, Deneb search course. Instead of going to Del Toreros, he made it into the Lava Chain, detach this oh uh, sorry. And then he tried to attack with the Lava Chain, I'm like, no, Altair. You know? And then the Bujin player, he he had a monster on the field and he goes part gets a Kaiser, then some of the other monsters, and he tries to exceed into uh, Susanna I'm like, no, pot, you know, so. Like I said, I'm, I'm pretty big when it comes to sh world sharking, but when it comes to professional Yu-Gi-Oh, I, I don't know. I really don't feel like spending, you know, all that money just to restart over and over again. There's just some decks that I don't like. Well, I just blatantly don't like some particular decks, and I, and I would never play them uh, competitively, because I just don't like them. Specifically, Shadows. I, I don't like that deck, so. Yeah. Anyway. Here's the deck profile from my nose. They will be missed. They shall be missed. So, uh, of course, at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time, so about an hour from the, the time this video goes up, you will be getting the actual Daily Duels, I believe, episode 461, using this new deck that will be replacing my nose, of course. So, I hope that you guys are excited for it. I hope you guys are looking forward to it. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support for not only my nose, but Daily Duels in general, and the support of my channel. And I will see you guys in about an hour. Uh, with the new deck that would be replacing my mouse. So yeah, thanks for watching.